Um, of course, our, my first lecture today is going to be on prehistory. I don't know if we'll get to uh, Mesopotamia or not, uh, but uh, usually before I, I start talking about prehistory, uh, I usually talk about the background of history, like what history is. Um, so I'm like an historian, you know, mostly historians primarily write history, you know, like write books on history. Uh, also historians, like they teach history, uh, they work in archives, uh, they work in museums, uh, that kind of, you know, type of work, uh, roughly. Uh, so like, yeah, what is, the first thing you usually ask, you know, is what is history? Well, it's a, all kinds of things. Uh, it can be a study of history, study of the past, primarily. Uh, but mostly with this class, uh, primarily it's about study of like past civilizations, like world civilizations in general. Uh, of course, this class y'all have signed up for is mostly a type of class which deals with mostly ancient history. So we will we'll start with like prehistory, prehistoric times, work our way through like the early civilizations. We're going to talk about like Mesopotamia, Egypt. I'll talk about India and China. I'll talk about of course, the Greeks and the Romans. I'm more of an expert in like that, that area, by the way. I'm mostly a Roman historian, by the way. Uh, and then, of course, I'll get up to like the Middle Ages. You don't usually cover as much on that, but uh, we'll at least cover up through like, I want to say maybe we can get to the Renaissance. Seven weeks class, kind of tight, you know, uh, schedule. You know about that. It's almost like a crash course in history. You know, take it seven weeks or even four weeks. I don't know if you ever taught it. you ever taken a four-weeks class? Summer, yeah, it's kind of tough teaching history. So that's mostly what history is. So it's a study of the past civilizations uh, in general. Um, I do have some other slides I can share with you uh, as well. Of course, I've got this one right here. These are just basic stuff I'm going to talk about right there. But, of course, they have Herodotus. You've probably heard of him. I usually talk about him when I first start talking about uh, you know, talk about history. Uh, of course, uh, the word history, uh, if you wonder about it, um, it goes back to Greek times. Uh, the word history is a Greek word, which means uh, to inquiry, uh, to um, to know, to know about the past would be a kind of a definition of it. Historians are kind of like detectives. They're trying to figure out what happened a long time ago. Uh, and so, uh, they have to piece together a lot of different information. It might be written. It might be oral. Now today, it could be archaeological stuff. So all this kind of uh, is what, let me take that off there and fix that. But um, that all that basically is what history is. And uh, Herodotus was believed to be one of the first to really write about history. I mean, they had history before that. And they can, you can go back to caveman times. You see that painting behind me, you know, that Lascaux cave, which I started a little short video on. Of course, that might be the first example of maybe written history because they're writing a history of the kind of animals they hunted, right? Uh, whatever they were. Uh, and... Um, and of course, they have, you know, oral history passed down. Uh, you've got even biblical history, like stories in the Bible is like a form of history that has to do with religion and God. Uh, but it's basically that. Homer, you know, all these other writers that wrote epic poems, they think that may have been a form of history, too. But Herodotus, Herodotus, you know, uh, of course, was the one that really started history first. Uh, who was he? Uh, Herodotus was a Greek writer that lived in the 5th century B.C. So he lived about almost 2,500 years ago, uh, Herodotus. He was later called the father of history. Uh, I think the Romans called him that later. And uh, Herodotus went on to write one of the first books on history. I don't know if I have that on there or not about that one. I don't think I do. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it's got different names, but some people call it the histories of Herodotus. His actual full name is Herodotus of Halicarnassus. Uh, he came from Western Turkey, which was part of the Greek world at the time. 
And uh, his books uh, would end up um, being one of the first historical works. And it was mostly about the Greek world at the time uh, when the Greeks were fighting the Persian Empire. And so if you know about Herodotus, Herodotus was the main source on the Persian Wars uh, that were being fought. You may have heard of battles like uh, Thermopylae, right? Battle of Thermopylae, Battle of Marathon, which is well known. Uh, and so he was the, the guy that wrote about that. So, so it's kind of talking about, you know, the background of history um, and all that and who Herodotus was. I think it was Cicero. He was a Roman writer, war writer, that came up with the term uh, father of history. So now they have what they call prehistory, right? Prehistory is like um, prehistoric times. It's pretty much either one. Uh, they call it um what is prehistory? Prehistory is just the historical period. I'll put it up on the screen, but it's the historical period before written records, before they actually had civilization uh, at one point. Uh, and um, that starts roughly about five to 6,000 years ago. And that's when really civilization and, and writing starts. Like the first type of writing systems were like cuneiform, uh, which the Sumerians developed, or uh, hieroglyphs, right? That the Egyptians in, developed, like in Africa. Uh, so after that, people start settling down more. Uh, and so they start to divide, you know, the prehistory or prehistoric period with later, I'll get to it, which is the Middle Ages when humans start coming in and developing like agriculture and all that, uh, which they will later. Uh, one thing about prehistory, which is very, very famous about it. Uh, it's um, heavily based in scientific fields. So if you want to go into prehistory, you got to study like fields like paleontology, right? Just like the study of like bones, geology, studying the earth's minerals, things like that. Uh, you got anthropology, studying different human culture. Uh, and then don't forget archaeology, which broke off from anthropology. So those are all different scientific fields. Uh, which mostly uh, they're in like, with prehistory and all that. So anyway, it's kind of kind of going through and talking about you know what prehistory is, and uh, so yeah, prehistory is vast. That's one thing about it. It goes back you know millions of years. Uh, of course, there's a debate about you know when the Earth started and all that, but they think the Earth is like four or five billion years old. So the time period we're actually studying about, it's not much like the last few thousand years that humans have really taken off uh, and all that. Uh, now, the next thing I want to get into is, uh, of course, I want to talk about the development of um, early humans. Of course, I will be getting later into the different cultural stages of humans. I'll get to like the Stone Age, uh, and then they've got the um, so-called Metal Age or Metal Ages that they have on the bottom. I'll get to that later, not now. I'll talk about that later. But let me first talk about um, the um, about early humans uh, in general. Uh, if you know much about early humans, of course, the humans today and also our ancestors are often called either hominids, or you'll see the term hominidae uh, being used uh, as well. And uh, humans first developed in Africa. If you know about Africa, Africa is considered to be the so-called cradle of humankind. It's where everything started a long time ago. This is in the pre prehistoric times, several million years ago, uh, we're talking about. Uh, and um, why why Africa? Because it was a warmer area, uh, especially like around the equator where Kenya, Ethiopia is. Uh, and they think it was very tropical uh, in that area. And it's mostly in the Stone Age, which I'll get to later, like the Paleolithic Age, I'll talk about later, you see there, uh, is where humans will eventually evolve and develop. They'll go from being hunter-gatherers uh, to eventually, over time, being like farmers. And, of course, farming will, or agriculture will later lead uh, to civilization uh, over time. Now, I first want to talk about examples of various early humans that have been found. This is going back to mostly the 18th, 1800s and the 1900s. 
19, 20th centuries, uh, roughly. Those are just pictures of like some of the early human fossils that they found of hominids or hominidae uh, that I'm talking about. The uh, one at the top left uh, is very famous. That, of course, you may have heard of is Australopithecus. You probably heard of that one, right? It was found about uh, about 50 years ago or so in the 1970s. And uh, that, of course, is considered one of the oldest human ancestors uh, that they have found uh, in Africa, dates to about maybe three and a half million years old. That's kind of what they think it looked like. Uh, and if you know about it, it was found by Dr. Donald Johansson. It was a team of um, paleontologists that discovered him in northern Kenya, or her, found in northern, northern Kenya. And um, apparently there was a Beatles song that was being played on the radio, which was Lucy in the Sky of Diamonds. And so they decided to call, they thought it was a she, they called her Lucy, uh, this uh, hominid they found. And um, so that one was considered the first, you know, supposedly ancestor that was related to humans, as far as they know. They have found some older than Lucy. They go back like, I want to say 5 million or so, but they seem to think that that's the main one that's likely related uh, to humans later, as far as they know. Uh, the one on the bottom, uh, like um, you notice like right there below Lucy, uh, that's uh, Homo habilis. The one that's got the teeth missing, you see on the bottom in the blue, on the bottom left, that's a Homo habilis skull. Uh, and Homo habilis is another hominid ancestor, early human ancestor, uh, that was discovered mostly in Africa uh, in the 20th century. Uh, they think Homo habilis was around, I don't know, from about two to three million years ago. Uh, it peaked as a culture uh, overall. Homo habilis was found by Louis Leakey, a uh, paleontologist. Uh, you may have heard of the Leakey family. They're a family of paleontologists. Uh, Louis Leakey, Mary Leakey, Richard Leakey. They're very famous. Uh, and anyway, uh, Homo habilis is a name that means either skilled man or handy man or handy human, if you want to call it that way as well. And um, he was the first major human uh, to use tools, which were mostly made of stone. Uh, the early types of tools that these early humans used were what they call a pebble chopper. I don't know if you know what that is, but a pebble chopper is a type of um, stone tool that's uh, struck against other rocks or pebbles, usually pebbles to make an edge. Uh, and so he was the first to use those kind of, um, of tools. And um, Homo habilis um, was a meat eater. So he, he basically killed animals and, and ate them. I'm not sure about an, uh, humans before, early humans like Australopithecus may have not, not eaten meat. They're not sure about that. But they think he did uh, and all of that. Uh, so, so that's that's what Homo habilis was uh, the the next one in line, um, and you can see like a lot of early humans had heavy brow ridges. You'll see across the like the close to the below the forehead and all of that, uh, which a lot of that was um, caused by um, higher amounts of testosterone that were in like early humans. That's why like Neanderthal humans are have such a bulging face. You see that later because they're very stocky type humans later. Now, the one in the middle you're looking at, it's, you can see that one with the complete skeleton right there. That's a Homo erectus, uh, which is another later human culture uh, that was around as well. Homo erectus means different translations, upright human, upright man. Um, they consider Homo erectus to be the first bipedal human. Uh, that walked on two feet. And because of it, they believe Homo erectus was the first early human ancestor to leave Africa thousands of years ago. He left. Uh, and they went to like Europe and Asia. Uh, and the reason why was, was mostly because they were hunter-gatherers. That's one thing about the, so they're the first major hunter-gatherer. Uh, they would hunt animals like you see the paintings behind me. Uh, and 
Yeah, he dates back to one to two million years ago. Uh, and um, one thing about um, Homo erectus, uh, they were known for using new technologies that you see uh, early on um, with, with human ancestors, such as the stone hand axe. That was one of the first major tools that came about, which is a type of stone axe that they used in their hand with no handle. Uh, so it was used for cutting up things, used as a weapon. Also, uh, he was one of the first to use perfect fire as well, which we use for different things. Also, uh, throwing spears, like the addle-addle. You may have heard of the addle-addle, uh, something used a lot throughout the world, the throwing spear. And that's something that they use to hunt animals uh, also as well. That one, you see the skeleton in the middle in that picture. That is what is a famous um, or Homo erectus um, skeleton they found called Turkana Boy, which was found in the early 1980s. It was found by Richard Leakey. He was the son of Louis Leakey. And uh, it's considered the most complete um, skeletal remain of a Homo erectus ever found. It was found near Lake Rudolph um, in northern Kenya. Uh, and so, so that's basically one example of like a fossil remain that they found. Also, other ones you may have heard of. Also, uh, Java Man uh, is another Homo erectus fossil that they found uh, in um, China. No, not China, in the Pacific, actually, Pacific Ocean, uh, on the island of Java. They found like some, um, some like remnants of like a um, Homo erectus. And then um, Peking Man was found, I believe, in the early 1900s. Uh, that was a remnant of a Homo erectus skeleton found around, along the Yellow River Basin in China. So they're all over the place, Pacific, China, Europe, the Homo erectus. Uh, so they're believed to be the early humans before Homo sapiens come in and eventually become the dominant species. Now, whether these are separate species or just a evolution of different human culture, they're not sure. Uh, but that's kind of debated today about that. Uh, then at the top right, uh, see those two, pick those two skulls together. Those are skulls of what they call Homo sapiens. The Homo sapiens. Homo sapiens, of course, are the ancestors of modern humans. Uh, Homo sapiens either means wise man or thinking man because uh, they are believed to be highly intelligent. Uh, humans, uh, and they appeared about two to 300,000 years ago, uh, these types of humans. They would populate mostly parts of North Africa, Europe, and parts of Asia uh, as well. The most famous, which is, I've got some other pictures I can show you later. I'm kind of just kind of going through some of these slides right here for you. But um, the most famous is Neanderthal man, Homo neanderthalensis. Um, discovered in the 19th century. And um, Neanderthal man is a type of Homo sapiens that was found mostly in um, Southwestern Asia and Europe. In fact, they were first found in Germany, a place called Neanderthal, Germany. It actually means Neander Valley, Germany. Uh, I forget when exactly, but it was in the 1800s, I know. Uh, and um, one thing about Neanderthal humans they were big game hunters, like I told you, like Homo erectus was. Maybe they were ancestors of Homo erectus. They don't really know uh, for sure, but they were very stocky. Uh, their body, I think the average height um, of a um, Neanderthal man may have been five foot six at the most. And I think females were closer to five feet tall. They weren't very tall, you know, uh, early humans like this. So very squat, very bulky type human. Uh, they're known for their large craniums. That's, that's one thing you really, you'll read about or you want to research it more later, but they are known for having large brain, lar one of the largest brains ever with, with any human. So their brain case is much bigger than regular humans today. Like average humans, I think it's, um, what is the average, 1,400 to 1,600 CCs, 
And I think the average human today is 1,200 to 1,400 cc's. That's, um, I believe that's, um, what is that? Cubic centimeters, I believe. So, um, so a little bit bigger brain. Now, did it make them smarter? Not necessarily, but evidently both that human and later humans were very intelligent. Um, now, of course, over time, if you know what happened, Neanderthal humans went extinct. Uh, there's different theories on that, like why they went extinct. Uh, one theory is that a lot of their clans that they lived in were too small, and so there was a lot of too much interbreeding between them. Uh, and then, of course, the other theory is that they were basically wiped out by other humans that were more advanced as a culture, and so they disappeared over time. But I do know up to like Homo sapiens sapiens, like your modern humans that come in, they're actually still around uh, Neanderthal humans. Uh, but over time, they think they may have gone extinct is one theory they have about it. Uh, on the bottom here, what you see there, that 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 um, that last skull on the bottom right of that picture, that's what they call Cro-Magnum man. And Cro-Magnum man was the first example of a human culture that was um, what they call Homo sapiens sapiens, which is what they call modern humans today, which they think modern humans appeared roughly about 50 to 30,000 years ago. It's about it. Uh, so they don't go back that far. But they think they're the ones that did all the cave paintings. Like the ones you're kind of looking at is kind of similar to that kind of culture because they had, they had different caves that were discovered, like Cro-Magnum Cave, Lascaux Cave, uh, like you saw in the video, all those are different caves uh, where they did cave painting or cave art uh, in general. That's something that they are kind of relatively known for. They lived also in caves because of the cold climate at the time, which I'll talk more about later when I get more into the different cultural stages of human development. But at the time, it was an ice age. So humans had to live in caves. Uh, if they did, they lived in some kind of hut dwellings that they may have built uh, also as well. I do have other slides. Let me see. I had some other ones I could have showed you real quick. Well, here's a picture, of course, of Lucy, uh, kind of what she kind of looks like or what they think she looked like. So you can see the pelvis kind of looks like, you know, later humans. Here's some other pictures of Homo habilis that you see right there. And there's uh, the, the so-called Turkana boy. Uh, they're talking about. Uh, those are st uh, stone hand axes, which uh, was, I told you, the main technology. So, you know, this is all part of the Stone Age. Stone Age is you know pretty much the main technology uh, that humans, you want to look at that later, but it shows you how they made stone hand axes, chipping away at parts of the stone uh, to make an edge. Hey, sorry. Um, I'm just showing some other pictures I've got too. Yeah, here's some uh, there's other ones too. I didn't talk about Homo heidelbergensis was believed to be some kind of uh, ancestor that was between Homo erectus and Neanderthal humans. So they had a bunch of other ones that they found uh, as well that are out there. Uh, here's also another picture showing you the difference between that's a Neanderthal skull and then you got the later one on the left of later humans. So not as heavy on the brow ridges here. You see the face is a little different. You can see even the, um, like the mandible and the jaw and all that are a lot different uh, compared to later humans. So yeah, there's a Cro-Magnum skull you're looking at. And of course, we already showed you the video, of course. That's from the little Sco cave. Now I did need to get into also and talk about as well uh, the Neolithic sites. Uh, of course, we'll get more into Jericho later. I'll talk about that in a little bit. But let me go ahead and go back up here. I need to talk about also the different cultural stages of human development that you have. Uh, and they usually divide them into two main periods. You've got basically what we call the Stone Age first, it's broken up into three periods. You've got the Paleolithic Age, Mesolithic Age, and the Neolithic Age. And of course, those are Greek terms that they use for the Old Stone Age, 
Middle Stone Age, and the New Stone Age. Um, and um, now I'll get to it later. They have also another period. Uh, that's the Stone Age. They have the Metal Ages too, as well. Uh, the Metal Age is broken up too. The three sub periods. You got the Copper Age. Also, it's called sometimes the Chalcolithic Age. You'll hear that term uh, being used. Chalcolithic is Greek for uh, copper stone, because it's believed that at the end of the Stone Age, humans started using copper as the first type of metal, as like a tool or whatever. So about five to 3,000 BC, they think they had a Copper Age. So it overlaps the old, the uh, New Stone Age, of course. Uh, Bronze Age, 3,000 to about 1,200 BC. And the Iron Age is 1,200 to 500 CE. So that's how they break down the so-called Metal Ages. Of course, we're not going to talk much about the Metal Ages right now, but I'll get to it later about that. So yeah, here, here you go. go back to this one if you didn't. If I didn't show that one up there, but those are your two main cultural stages. There you go. Which go up to 500 CE. So you're looking at a period of like two and a half something million years that humans go through these two different stages. Which the Stone Age was the longest one, of course. Of those two main periods, Stone Age and, of course, the, the so-called Metal Ages that you have. Now, of course, one of the first one I'm going to talk about is the uh, hunter-gatherer period uh, that they have uh, overall. So I'm going to first talk about that. Uh, the first one, which is the Paleolithic Age, um, is, of course, mostly a hunter-gatherer type culture where humans basically hunted. They hunted, by the way, during mostly an ice age, because the earth was kind of a cold period. Uh, and uh, most of the Paleolithic age was in what they call the Pleistocene epoch. Pleistocene epoch is a type of geological epoch uh, that happens around that time that the earth is actually in. And you can see the Paleolithic age lasts close to two and a half million years. It goes down to about 10,000 BC. Uh, and Humans lived in small clans, which it varies on the size on it, but 30 to 50, I think, was a good average size of a clan, which were probably led by various tribal leaders. And so humans had to survive hunting and gathering. Men mostly did all the hunting, and then women did. They gathered the food. Uh, they also nourished the children, did all the you know things that women did uh, for a long time as well up to now. Uh, and so that was an, that was basically what humans did for a long time. They hunted, and that's how they survived. Uh, and I told you Homo erectus, you know, one of the early humans, uh, was an example, of course, of such a type of hunter-gatherer. Uh, then we have another period later called Mesolithic Age uh, as well. It's kind of a transitional period uh, that occurs between the Old and the New Stone Ages. Uh, it's kind of a debate about when it happens, but usually they think it happened like at the end of the old Stone Age. And what happens is humans start to progress from hunting to farming. They might be doing it at the same time, like hunting and farming, uh, basically. Then over time, humans started farming more than hunting, and that became the main culture that would take over eventually what humans will survive on. Uh, and um, what happens is the Earth warms up in a new period called the Holocene Epoch. What was the Holocene Epoch? It was the current uh, geological period uh, that we're in right now. So it started about, it varies on the time, but I think it started something like 11, 12,000 years ago or something like that. Uh, so it'd be like roughly about 13, 14,000 years. Actually, 11, 000, 11 to 12,000 BC, I think I thought is when it actually was roughly, which would put it about, 13, 14,000 years ago or something like that, right when the new Stone Age comes in. It's about when they think it started. You see the receding glaciers uh, on the earth, uh, warming climate, uh, and then that allows humans to eventually transgress uh, to eventually farming uh, overall. Uh, then you have uh, the Neolithic period. Humans then begin farming. Uh, that you got 10,000, about 3,000 BC, uh, basically. 
that leads into civilization in what was the Neolithic revolution? Uh, well, it was a revolution in culture where humans started to farm, uh, use of agriculture, um, domestication of livestock as well, not just crops. Uh, they think that you know barley, wheat, things like that were probably growing naturally uh, before you know, they started farming. And then humans figured out how to grow crops using water, uh, and then over time, that led to civilization. So farming or agriculture, uh, we take that for granted sometimes, you know, uh, today. Uh, but it's what led to human civilization. Because uh, from there, humans started urbanizing. Uh, they started coming up with new ideas, um, started using different technologies. So you got the development of language, uh, religion, uh, various culture, um, and so on. And so all that has changed because of humans going more towards, you know, development of agriculture. So I guess if the earth would continue an ice age, you know, you probably wouldn't have seen that. You, we might be still hunt, hunting and gathering, you know, today and all that. Now, I wanted to talk about one more thing, too, about the prehistoric period. I need to talk about, like, Neolithic sites that first developed uh, in the world. I did have a picture of that, I think. Where was I just showed earlier? Is which is of uh, Jericho, which is right here. Uh, Jericho is considered one of the oldest Neolithic sites uh, in the world. It varies on the dating, but I believe it's something like 10 to 11,000 BC. It's about the time period of Jericho. Jericho is a Neolithic site that's in Palestine, that would be in the West Bank, you know, where Israel is. And um, People have known about Jericho for, for years, you know, going back to the Bible, because if you know about it, Jericho was one of the first cities that the Israelites founded. Uh, so it goes back a long way. Uh, they do think that Jericho was originally a type of, um, it was a type of hunter-gatherer site, like a long time ago, uh, before this period. And uh, over time, um, eventually they, it evolved into a, a site for farming you know, in that area with some use of irrigation. Uh, the Jordan River is nearby, you know, which is a very fertile valley uh, in that region. And uh, Jericho is not that big. It's about 10 acres in size. It's like a small village. And uh, the name uh, Tel S. Sultan, by the way, which is the Arabic name, means Sultan's Hill. So I think it was kind of, they may have been built on like a artificial hill, which a lot of them were which is called a tell, T-E-L-L, -L, if you know what that is. Uh, and um, there weren't that many people living there. Maybe two to 3,000 people may have lived there you know, at one point. So now the modern city of Jericho is not the same anymore. It's built nearby, you know, that's part of it, but it's located in that, that same location. Just why they call it Jericho because of the, you know, the modern city later that they have. Uh, another one is, uh, I think I've got uh, some uh, some other pictures to show you that. They have, there, there's another, of course, of Jericho, part of it right there. But Katal Huyuk is another famous site that's well known, uh, which is in Turkey. Yeah, Katal Huyuk. Uh, and uh, the name is Turkish, meaning fork mound, uh, because of the shape of the settlement, which is in the shape of a fork, uh, they believe. It dates back pretty far. It goes back, you know, as far back as some of these other sites like Jericho, et cetera. It dates back like 10,000 years ago, maybe at the most. And uh, it was first found in the 1960s. It's a much larger site. It's about, uh, if you want to know the size of it, about 32 acres in size. It's much larger uh, compared to some of the other sites uh, that are well known. And it is famous for its mud brick huts uh, that were constructed as dwellings. And a lot of their dwellings are famous for having like doors or doorways that are in the roof where they use ladders to get down into their house. It's kind of weird. Um, it's believed also that they may have done some kind of fresco paintings where they paint their walls and things like that, kind of like behind me with those cave paintings. So, 
So that's that's Katal Hu Yu. That's another one. That one's okay, like I said, Turkey, uh, roughly. Um, and they have one more I'll give you, too. That's also, well, like an early prehistoric site. There's one called Copecli Tepe, which is well known as well. That was found around the same time in the 1960s. Uh, Copecli Tepe means in Turkish pot belly hill because the shape of the hill, the top of the hill, you can see there. It's like a pot belly. Uh, and uh, it's also in Turkey, too. So both these Neolithic sites uh, overall. Uh, this one was not really a city. They think it was some kind of holy site that may have been used for religious purposes. And so some people think it may have had some kind of um, temple there or some kind of temple that was built as part of a huge complex. It dates back pretty far. It's almost as old as Jericho uh, in Palestine. So it's kind of a debate about which one is um, older. And um, it's famous for having these um, huge pillars uh, that are part of it, which are, um, they may have been 20 tons each, which is ridiculous, the amount of weight that was used to <clears throat> hold up this temple. And um, they have found evidence that uh, they may have done like animal sacrifices there because they found like a lot of bones that are of animals that are kind of there. They may have worshipped these animals as like gods, uh, which is interesting about that. But I think it's about, uh, how big is that site? It's about 22 acres in size. It's about how big the uh, Gopekli Tepe is. <clears throat> so these are all examples of various, you know, um, Neolithic sites, and there's all over the place, like Stonehenge and so on, are all like Neolithic sites. Uh, they were kind of well known. Uh, they were built in the world. <clears throat> all right. Um, I also need to talk about real quickly as well the four river valley civilizations that they have. Uh, and um, after the Neolithic period kind of comes starts to come to an end, you get these you get this case where you get these so-called river valley civilizations that evolve throughout the world, and they're called this because of the fact that these civilizations developed around rivers, major rivers in the world, and um, those are the four uh, that are right there, uh, which are Mesopotamia, of course, which they think is the oldest which dates back 10,000 to 11,000 years ago, uh, roughly. It's based mostly in Iraq, uh, although Mesopotamia includes like parts of like Jordan uh, area, Israel, uh, parts of Syria and Turkey, and probably Kuwait on the bottom of, of course, Iraq as well. Uh, Mesopotamia is based around two rivers, which are the Tigris, Euphrates rivers. Uh, also India, number two, second oldest, uh, of course, it's based in South Asia to the east of Mesopotamia. And uh, it's based around two rivers, which are the Indus and the Ganges rivers. Uh, so you got that one. Third oldest is China, which is in East Asia. Uh, it's based around the Yellow River. Uh, and, um, and then you have the fourth oldest, which is ancient Egypt, uh, which is based in North Africa. Now, and of course, based around the Nile River Basin. So, yeah, you'll need to know these later uh, because, um, of course, you're going to have a quiz on it later, which you'll have, of course, which I'll post later. Is it static, even, Mike? Is it really? I don't know. I haven't really had problems with other classes with it. Um, what about you, Andrew? It's not static -y? Huh? A little bit? I'm not sure why exactly. But I haven't had trouble with it. I don't know exactly why. But but anyway, um let's see. Um so yeah, that's that's basically um the rivers, uh, of course, and of course the civilizations that are of course based in that area, which which we'll talk about later, all these different civilizations, because of course our first one we'll talk about later uh will be um, Mesopotamia. I don't know if I'm a lecture on that today or not. I know on Wednesday, 
uh, and probably Friday we'll get most of that done on uh, Mesopotamia. Um, now I did want to, um, you know, here's a map showing you uh, as well where they're located. So you can see here the different locations of all these civilizations. Uh, of course, you see Egypt here, Mesopotamia here. India is over here. It really starts here and it spreads over to the Ganges. And then you got the um, China's over here. So Yellow River, Indus, Euphrates, Tigris, and Nile River is right there. All right, yeah, let me go ahead and review real quick uh, over what we've covered so far uh, for... Um, see here. Let me bring that up again so you can see that. I'll show it to you real quick. Went out. Yeah, the map was here if you missed that. Uh, where was it? I just showed it to you. There it is right there if you missed it. But um, yeah, I got the uh, Egypt here, Nile River. Again, Mesopotamia right here. Uh, Euphrates, Tigris, Indus River, India. And then, of course, Yellow River, where China is. All right. So uh, anyway, uh, let me also cover, um, of course, review real quick on what we've covered today so far. Now, prehistory, what is that? Uh, prehistory, like I told you, is the period before civilization, before they had written records, uh, which dates roughly three to 4,000 B.C. and before. So it would be roughly... Um, five, 6,000 years ago uh, is about when prehistory or prehistoric times ended. Uh, what are some examples of early humans or hominids that developed in Africa, Eurasia, and the Americas? Um, first, I told you that Australopithecus was the first found in Africa. That one was considered the oldest originally. Uh, then I told you about uh, Homo hobilis, that was the first meat eater, right? First real human uh, that's related to later humans uh, that you had. They were the first to use stone tools, which is why he was called handy human. Um, or I think they also say um, skilled man or skilled human. I also talked about um, Homo erectus, first bipedal human. Uh, culture. I told you about Turkana boy is one of the examples. And um, Homo erectus used like, um, he used uh, stone tools like um, the stone and axe. He used fire. He used the addle addle, which is like the throwing spear. Uh, and also don't forget that Homo erectus was the first human to leave Africa. He went to like Europe, Asia, also discovered in the Pacific as well. Uh, what two cult, major cultural stages man developing up to around 500 CE? Um, I told you they had the Stone Age, and then you had the Metal Ages. Uh, Stone Age is broken into Paleolithic Age, also called Old Stone Age. You got the Mesolithic Age or Middle Stone Age. And you got the Neolithic Age or New Stone Age. Uh, Metal Ages, of course, are the Copper Age, also called Chalcolithic Age. Uh, you got the Bronze Age. Then you got the Iron Age. Uh, what type of culture does man rely on to survive during the Old Stone Age? Uh, mostly a hunter gatherer type culture. So a man hunted. Uh, women, of course, also participated in the gathering, nurturing of the family, uh, and so on. The Old Stone Age is the longest period, 2.5 million down to 10,000 B.C. So it occurs mostly in the Ice Age. Uh, what type of climate decline during the Mesolithic Age or Middle Stone Age has man transgressed to farming? Uh, the Ice Age began to recede, like glaciers started being pulled back toward the um, 
poles. Oh, and so that led to a warmer climate. Warmer climate allowed agriculture uh, later. Uh, what current geological epoch uh, began around, I think maybe that's about somewhere around that time, I guess, when it was at the end of the Stone Age. It would be about um, close to when the new Stone Age comes in. That would be the Holocene Epoch uh, is what it was. So that's the current geological period that we're in now. Uh, the one in the old Stone Age was the Pleistocene Epoch. Uh, what was the Neolithic Revolution that occurred during the New Stone Age? Uh, that was when um, humans uh, began to farm for agriculture. That became their main culture in general. And so you had a case where humans went from hunting and gathering uh, to farming. They think that Neolithic Revolution is what created civilization later. So that's what the, the so the Neolithic Revolution is actually farming itself, uh, more or less. I guess other, other you know animal husbandry or whatever is kind of part of that. You know, what are some uh, ancient Neolithic sites that show evidence of early farming and civilization? Where are they located? Uh, I told you about Jericho, uh, which is also called Tel Es Sultan. Uh, that's located, of course, in the West Bank in Palestine. Um, so that one is considered one of the oldest of uh, the Neolithic sites. It might date back to 10,000 BC or so. Uh, I told you about the tall Huyuk, which is in Turkey. It was found in the 1960s. It's about, varies on that, but it's maybe close to 10,000 BC. Now, that was the one that was famous for the mud huts. When you saw the picture. And then you have Gopekli Tepe. Uh, is another Neolithic, Neolithic site in Turkey as well. That one dates back maybe 10,000 BC uh, too. The name means Pot Belly Hill. Oh, Katahuyuk, don't forget, means uh, Fork Mound. So Pot Belly Hill, Gopekli Tepe, uh, that one was known, I told you, for being like some kind of religious holy site. It had some kind of huge temple complex. So you can already see humans are starting to develop religion at that point. Uh, then that last question on the bottom, what are the four river valley civilizations that developed first and their important rivers? I uh, told you the oldest is Mesopotamia, uh, which is based uh, in Iraq, mostly. Uh, it's got two rivers, uh, Euphrates, Tigris. Uh, then you've got uh, the second oldest, which is India, the primary one is the Indus River, which is located in Pakistan and India. Uh, but you can also throw in the other river you saw, the Ganges River. Three, uh, you've got the old third oldest, which is China. China's got the Yellow River, which is in East Asia. And then, of course, your fourth oldest, uh, of course, is, um, is Egypt. Uh, which is in North Africa, and e ancient Egypt is based around the Nile River Basin. So those are your four river valley civilizations, Mesopotamia, uh, India, China, and, of course, Egypt. And those are the short names they call them. Like, you'll see the long names, you know, being used for it. Like, I think they'll often call Mesopotamia the Tigris-Euphrates Valley Civilizations, uh, I think the one for um, India is often called the Indus Ganges River Valley Civilizations. One for China is called the Yellow River Valley Civilizations. And then, of course, the one for Egypt is often called the Nile River Civilization or Egypt, Ancient Egypt as well. So it's called different names, but a lot of times they just narrow it down to the four main names. But Mesopotamia usually has either that or Iraq being used. Because Iraq is mostly where most of Mesopotamia is. So anyway, um, of course, I will be getting later uh, into to Mesopotamia. Um, I'll probably on, I guess, on Wednesday's class, I'll concentrate more on getting into that uh, for the class. Uh, I don't know if y'all wanted to lecture any on that today. Probably not. You probably want to go ahead and 
And I'll probably go, need to go ahead and start looking at the syllabus if you haven't done that yet. So start looking over everything you need uh, for the class uh, for the semester. Uh, and um, you, you need to do two things right now. Uh, I would, uh, like, like assignments wise anyway, uh, pretest. So go ahead and start taking the pretest, go to quizzes, take that. Uh, of course, there's going to be a prehistory quiz as well, uh, which I'm going to post today, uh, which you need to complete by next week. Also, don't forget, we have two other major assignments, of course, coming up. Book report due in November. Uh, you decide what book you want to do for your book report. Uh, vocab, you got the first key terms, vocab. That's actually due in two weeks. So that's something you need to start working on right now. Uh, and uh, like I said, you don't need a textbook for it. You can use like encyclopedias or whatever to look up those sources. You can also use my lectures too if you want. You can do, you can do that too. You want to use that for a source. Just mention that as well. Uh, and um, yeah, I'll try to work on the staticky thing. I'm not sure what the deal is. Maybe my, maybe my mic's too high. Or something. I'll turn it down maybe or something like that. Maybe that might help it a little bit. But um, I don't know if that helps to turn it down maybe. Is it too loud maybe my mic? But uh, you might want to use headphones, you know, to like you're on StreamYard or whatever. It's probably easier to do it that way. So I don't think you're having headphones right now, but you might want to wear some or earbuds uh, to help with the staticky stuff. So uh, any questions before I go? I think that's going to be it lecture-wise uh, today uh, for now. Uh, but like I said, on Wednesday uh, and part of probably Friday, I'm probably going to have a extensive lectures, of course, on Mesopotamia. Um, so I don't know if anybody's got a question or not. I'm trying to unmic her. Do no. you have a question? No? What's that? I don't have any questions. So no questions? Okay. Well, let me know later if you have any no questions. Okay. So anyway, um, that's it for today. Uh, but like I said, start working on assignments. I've got posted uh, right now on Canvas. And uh, I will probably post some kind of announcement. I don't know. It might be tomorrow when I get to it. But I am going to probably move up the time. Uh, See, so I said like 1.30 was okay. 1.30, was that it? Or was it one? I couldn't remember which one we decided on. What time? Are we be. meeting every day? Lombardi. It's just I'm gonna I'm gonna try to meet like Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Have some kind of lecture for y'all of some type. At least three times a week. Uh, try to have something oh. for y'all. Okay. Yeah, Monday and Wednesday is good for me for one thirty, but Friday I usually work, so I'll probably be at work, but I'll still be able to come into the video chat. Oh yeah, you can come back and you know. I'm going to have, have this lecture up later on my YouTube channel. So you just go back and look at it. So you don't have to watch it live, you know, necessarily. I'm just streaming it, you know, right now. So it's, like I said, it's, it's optional for you to participate uh, in the lecture, okay? Uh, of course, you can send me questions or comments later when I post it to my YouTube channel. Uh, you do get bonus points for that. So just think of any kind of question, comment you have about the lecture. And it doesn't have to be about the lecture. It could be something, anything you want about that period you want to ask me about, you can uh, more or less. Okay. So I'll see you on Wednesday. I will post some kind of announcement later about, you know, upcoming lecture. Uh, but our next lecture, like I said, will be on Mesopotamia that I'll have. Okay. So y'all take care. Uh, y'all have a good week and all that. I guess y'all are safe. Huh? Y'all weren't affected by the hurricane. I guess not. I was. Oh, you were? Uh, yeah, I was in Baton Rouge. We had our lights were out for like Four days, five days. Four or five days. Ooh, that's terrible. Yeah, we were out for a while too, our electricity, but we just got a bunch of wind damage mostly. Mm -hmm. All right, well, well I'll see y'all later. Yeah. Y'all take care. Have a great one. Okay.